Welcome to Basketball on Figueroa, the only podcast breaking down everything happening with the Lakers, Clippers, and Sparks. I'm your host, Edwin Garcia, and joining me today, as usual, my co-host, Dar E. N. Vaziri, a.k.a. Dime Dropper. Dime, Monday night, man. How you doing? And we know the Angelino. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. It's almost playoff time. Kings, Clippers, Lakers. Actually, no, I don't know about the Lakers, but Kings and Clippers look like they're headed towards home games at the Staples Center in the playoffs. We might, we're might. we probably going to get a play-in home game for the Lakers at some point, I, I'd assume. Ah, who knows? <laughs> Maybe. They we'll see the ongoing situation. You could finish with the eight seed and then beat the seven. So there's no home playing game for the Lakers. Can can still finish six as well, as slim as that chance is. Well, let's just put it this way: there's going to be postseason basketball, yes, and uh, hockey hopefully soon at Staples Center in the last year where we have three teams competing at the same time in the arena. So that's going to be awesome. Dodgers uh, season is going on, and uh, just got a win in this one on the night that we're recording. So I'm feeling good. Yourself? Oh man, feeling all the things. <laughs> I'm I'm uh, I'm excited for the end of the season. You know, like I feel like in some ways it's my end of my season. It's like oh we're we're heading to the big part now. Here comes the postseason. Here comes the stuff that everyone's excited about. And I'm just trying to you know show up every day, do the work the best I can. And and I'm I'm excited and nervous because with so many things in flux with the Lakers, I'm like, are we gonna prep for a nine ten? Then maybe a seven eight. Are we gonna seven eight? Are we gonna have a series? Will our season be done? After the next episode, are we going to go on for a month? I don't know. So it's it's wild, and we're going to get into all of it. But I'm excited. So hopefully this is what we all want, uh, games to matter late, and then to have games past 82. And the Lakers, no matter what, will definitely go past 82. Um, so it, it's going to be exciting. We'll see what happens. So let's just jump right into it. We're going to start with um, uh, Clippers-Kings. Uh, first game here on the set, uh, it was a, a 109 uh, a 95 uh, game with the Kings actually winning. I think we both had the Clippers winning, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but the Kings were able to pull it out. Uh, Diane, why don't you lead the way here? Uh, what, what was the reason that the, the Kings were able to kind of, you know, take control and win this game? Well, this was the first game that started Kawhi Leonard being out. And at first I was very, very worried. At this point I was like, okay, maybe this is just load management. You know, we're close to the playoffs, but they were saying it was a sore knee. So I said, if he misses the second game in a row, then I'll start to worry. I don't think it's a big deal. It's probably just the third game this season where they're load managing him. And it was another pathetic effort by the Clippers without Kawhi, especially in the second half. They just kind of got blown off the floor. They were only down five at halftime, just got blown off the floor. And another game where James Harden struggled immensely, six points on one for seven shooting. Paul George only shot 12 times. And if it's a Zubats had an uncharacteristically bad shooting game where he was just missing a lot of shots around the basket. And the Clippers just didn't have the right effort defensively to beat a Sacramento team on the road without Kawhi Leonard. And it just shows, again, just how important Kawhi Leonard is for the Clipper team. No, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, yeah, without Kawhi, again, when you miss those key players and, and the, the Kings, they're still – I'm still not sold necessarily on the Kings in terms of what they're going to be, um, you know, in, in the playoffs. I'm very curious to see one wh where they end up and and how things go. But, you know, they, they are a force. They, they have the talent, you know, 22 points from Sabonis gave you 20 rebounds. He did the same thing against the Lakers. I think exactly 20 rebounds. I think the points were a little different. Uh, and then, you know, you got Fox and Murray doing well. So even though they have, you know, key players out like uh, Herder and Monk, and, and they're probably not getting any of those kind of guys back, um, you know, for, for any type of run or anything, there's still a force here. And and I think I underestimated that a little bit. Obviously we didn't know Kawhi was going to be out and that, that, that changes things. I probably wouldn't have picked them to win if I knew Kawhi was going to be out. But even so, I was still kind of a little impressed with, with uh, the performance that they gave because I didn't think uh, they were going to pull it out, but they did. And like you said, a combination of Harden and then no Kawhi, uh, you can kind of see, um, you know, how that can kind of, you know, snowball into a defeat. Okay, so let's go ahead and just jump into the next one. We have Lakers, uh, Raptors, 128-111. Uh, for this game, um, I think it's just really a matter of the Raptors just, you know, they just don't really have anything they can really kind of do against a team like this. The Lakers, are they know what time it is. They're locked in, and loaded and engaged. Uh, you got uh, four of the five starters uh, playing in, in – in, in scoring in double figures, sorry. The only one that didn't is Reeves, who's actually kind of been struggling quietly 
uh, last couple weeks, especially with his three three ball. He hasn't been shooting very well. He was one for five in this game. So it, it's been a little bit of an, uh, a smaller story that hasn't really gotten highlighted because the Lakers are stacking up wins. But he's kind of struggled a little shooting-wise, which I guess it's good that they're able to win these games with him struggling. But I, I'm hoping to kind of get one of those good Reeves games coming up here because, you know, we, we kind of didn't get one here. Uh, did get some good Max Christie minutes, and overall, it was, it was a dominant win against uh, the Raptors. Uh, Dime, were you able to, to catch this uh, Lakers-Raptors matchup? Yeah, it was, and I think it was just a case of the Raptors being in a tanking mode. They don't have the talent. The guys are injured. Tanking team. So they just didn't have the talent to keep up with the Lakers, and the Laker offense has just looked very good the last couple of months, mainly with this new starting lineup of Rui Hachimura, AD, LeBron, D'Lo, and Austin Reeves. And in this game, I thought LeBron was really, really good. It was just another game where AD and LeBron went to work. Uh, LeBron barely missed. He was so efficient in this game. 23 points, 9 assists on 10 for 12 shooting. Then you got another double-double for AD, 21 and 12. Just two star players on the court, superstar-level players on the court. And then you got D'Lo with 23. Spencer Dinwiddie with 20, one of his best games as a Laker. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to have the plus-minus. Wow. That was a fraudulent there. <laughs> You're LeBron did have no LeBron did have 23 and AD did have the double double though and D'Lo did have 25. The only one I went wrong was uh Spencer Dinwiddie. He only had nine, but yeah, nine, nine points on on 50 percent shooting and all the shots were threes. But you'll take that with the way he's been shooting as a Laker so far. And you already mentioned Max Christie, so just taking care of business kind of thing. But as a Laker fan, probably good to see AD and LeBron still continuing to ball. Yeah, and we'll we'll talk more about the health of them. Uh, but at this point in the week, everything was good. And the next game, Lakers Wizards. Uh, I was a little worried uh, because of the the back to back nature of it. Oh, uh, are they everyone's going to play? You know, we talked about that, and and we both kind of thought, okay, I think they're going to all play, and they did. Everyone played. AD played. LeBron played. Man, AD just had a monster game. When you don't have the personnel to go against AD, and I know he gets he gets grief for oh look at look at how he plays against the bonus and then beat and this and that. But when he has an advantage, he definitely he takes advantage. And this one was in the one monster game, 35 points, 18 rebounds. He was just everywhere. Uh, they just didn't have an answer for him. And they just kept, kept feeding him and he kept dominating. And I think that's one of the reasons, you know, they were able to, you know, take care of business and win 125, 120. I believe I'm checking here. I think this was, was this the game where um, they had to bring back? Uh, yes, it is. It's the game. They had to bring back uh, LeBron AD. So one thing that I think is a, a bigger story here that I don't know if we've talked about here on the pod time is, um, the Lakers stay ready group, right? Like those, the young players, the fringe players, the, the guys who kind of only get minutes in garbage time or, you know, the depth chart just gets so bad, they end up playing some significant minutes. That squad has been bad all year. Now it's in garbage time. So I guess that's why we haven't discussed it. And I haven't even discussed it too much, but basically they just chuck up shots and they look like players who don't get any time in high school. And the minute they get in, they just start, you know, flying away. It's been like that. So it's been kind of bad and kind of frustrating. But it was always in a game that was either clearly, like I said, garbage time. They clearly won, clearly lost. So I don't know. You just watch them kind of play silly. And never means anything because they are in when the result's in hand. This was the first time it actually changed. It actually mattered because the result was in hand. And then I believe the Wizards went on an 11-2 run in like a minute <laughs> because Christie just kept missing all their shots. They did a poor job defending. And next thing you know, they actually had to call timeout, bring back the starters, and AD got a key block to really ice the game. And it was the first time that kind of like an ongoing issue that hasn't been addressed really got blown up. It became kind of like the main thing people were talking about. And Darvin had even mentioned he was going to, you know, have a talking with those guys the next day because, you know, it's, it's unacceptable. And, and Darvin Ham actually doesn't believe in garbage time. If you ever call anything garbage time, he'll kind of correct you and say, like, there, there are no garbage minutes because – Although the, the results in hand for those players, that is important time and needs to be practicing the right way to do things. So he, he actually would, you know, definitely push back on that phrasing. So this was the first time that I really felt like, yeah, this is we've seen this and it actually hurt this time because despite being up by like 15, it, it, it got to like a couple of possessions there, a couple of points uh, away from the result. So uh, Dan, can you talk a little bit about what's up with that stay ready group and that issue have you noticed it before and, and kind of what your comments are and like them giving up a lead like that so quickly i actually wasn't able to see this one edwin um so i i didn't realize it was so close i'm looking at the box score though and it's just another really solid balanced scoring game from the laker players you got Rui with 19 shooting lights out 75 percent lebron with 25 shooting 50 percent ad 35 and 18 shooting 59 percent 
16 from Reeves, 18 from D'Lo. I mean, your starters, you got all five of them with 16 plus points, just big time. But I will say this, I mean, looking at what you're saying, Colin Castleton and Max Lewis minus eight in one minute. Yeah. And you know it's funny. It's hilarious you say that about your bench warmers or, or your third stringer. Yeah, yeah. The Clipper fans say the exact same thing about ours. And the leading culprit for that come up and chucking shots thing that you described is Brandon Boston. He plays well when he, he plays decently when he plays regular minutes, but when he comes into those minutes, just the end of the game, just chucks up shots and we it, like Bones Highland as well. And we will like be minus 10 in those minutes. So I wonder if we're the, not the only two teams saying that, but it's hilarious that both sets of fan bases say that. Yeah. And yeah, it was the one um, I wrote an article about it for Silver Screen and Roll. And, and we got a lot of traction on that because I, I feel like it was something that hasn't been said too much. Like, on like a platform like an article right? it was never important enough but how it happens like okay this one is and then people were definitely like again the comments were like yeah like this is an issue all year and i hate these minutes they, they, they've been playing like this and to their credit uh the the following game which we'll talk about later lakers Cavs, uh during those garbage time minutes they played a lot better i noticed the difference i was like okay they're actually running their sets and they're, they're kind of playing it out instead of just like First person to get the ball past half court is going to be the first person to take a shot, you know. <laughs> so they, they did get better. So I'm I'm glad they did because it was it was getting bad and it almost cost them the game. It didn't, but it got scary and that that's pretty wild. Like you said, minus eight in a minute is it's almost impressive how how they tried to give it away, but they couldn't give it away. Lakers secured the win. All right, so next one we're going to talk about. I know Dime's going to bring it because we have Clippers Nuggets. Uh, this is another one where I just didn't see, you know, the Nuggets are such a good team. And even with the injuries they have and everything, I, I just thought they were going to still take care of business. But no, the Clippers actually did 102, 100. So, Dime, I want you to paint the word picture. Take me through those the, the final sequences there and then give me the overarching, uh, you know, uh, takeaways you have from this game. Final sequences that we were down 17 in the first quarter and then got back in the game and if it's a Zubats had some big defensive plays against Nikola Jokic, just playing solid one V one defense. We threw a lot of different stuff at Nikola Jokic in the second half. Sometimes we doubled. We started some possessions with PJ Tucker guarding him, started some possessions with Paul George guarding him and Paul George himself had a very solid game with 28 points and James Harden. I think one of the biggest differences was that he was aggressive. With James, with Kawhi Leonard out, you're going to need him to be aggressive because the way he creates is by getting attention as a score. So I thought that he he didn't shoot well. You know, six for 23 from the field, and he completely ran out of gas, but he had his first 20-point game in a month. So that was absolutely huge. And we got some really solid minutes from Westbrook and Norman Powell off the bench. So Russ is starting to trend in the upwards direction. And if it's a Zubats, I thought was kind of the player of the game, 14 points and 15 boards. So really big win. Of course, no Jamal Murray though, but really big win for us. And makes me think, okay, now we're starting to maybe trend in the right direction. And of course, Kawhi Leonard missing this game. I was a little nervous. I was like, oh my God, is it a real injury? What's happening? But then somebody uh, that I know that's on my channel a decent amount, I'm not going to say who, said that he heard that it's not a big deal. It's just extended load management, and this, this organization is hiding it. But we'll see. I have no actual proof, but it seems like it, especially with – well, actually, no, I'll wait for us to continue in the timeline. But at this point, I believe the guy. Let's say that. that. I believe him that it's just extended load management. They're just saying knee inflammation because they got to say something or else they'll get fined. Of course, yeah. They do have to say something or else they'll get fined. So, and uh, again, especially – this late in the season, they all have something. I mean, no, no one's healthy, healthy, right? Like I'm sure there, there's something that's bothering them. Uh, so yeah, we'll get to that more later. They had another game the following day, uh, playing the Utah Jazz. Uh, they crushed them 131, 102. Obviously, the Jazz. Every second half of the season in the last couple of years, they've been on full tank mode. I think at this point, they got like an 11 game losing streak or something like that. So they're just, they're just, they're really just getting to the bottom of the barrel there and digging as hard as they can, uh, trying to, to get to the center there. So you know. For me, the biggest takeaway is just uh, I'll just kind of start off the, the Clippers Jazz one is just taking care of business, right? Talk about it. This late in the season, beat the team you're supposed to beat, and then give the, the effort you need to against you know the top teams to get some wins where you can. And here that's exactly what happened, right? They they took care of, of the, the Jazz, they they mopped them right away. 41-16 in the first quarter. It was pretty much done right away. Uh you had um 
four, five, six, seven, eight players in double figures. So they it was just a good old fashioned butt kicking, and they just kind of steamrolled them again. No quiet, but no problem. They were able to dominate from the beginning and just kind of take it over from there. Uh, Diane, what, what what do you want to say about this Jazz game here? Utah trash suck. It's so great <laughs> to see them be ass. Uh, it was not even a game to just talk about. Like we played well because we actually didn't play with our food, came out and hit him in the mouth right away. They just didn't have the talent and shot making to keep up with us. Paul George didn't even play the whole second quarter. It was great to see Terrence Mann be our leading scorer, though. I'll say that 19 points on eight for nine shooting. The Clippers also have been doing this carousel with Plumlee and Tice. You know, each game it's like a different one, but who's Ty Lue going to go with in the playoffs is a huge question for me. I prefer Tice he played really well in this game, doing a good job protecting the rim and playing timely help defense changed a lot of shots, even though he's only six, eight and was even able to knock down a three and go five for seven from the field for 11 points. Then Brody starting to play a lot better. 17, five and four, two steals for Russ on eight for 11 shooting. And then Norm Powell with his 18 points. The guy should probably win six man of the year. In my opinion, I know I'm biased, wow. but I mean, Who's your who's your pick? Like Malik Monk or Nas Reed? I think these guys have been Malik Monk just got hurt. Norman Powell's been absolutely incredible. So good yeah, win against the bad team. Yeah, those are the, the ones that I'm thinking as well. Monk, uh, the injury, I don't know how much that changes things or makes people not want to vote for him. I don't know, but that would be another one. But it'll be interesting. And yeah, Russ, you gotta remember also he he's coming back from injury. So although he's a veteran and knows everything, like he's still dealing with that too. And he needs, I'm glad he came back earlier because it gives him some time to kind of get situated, you know, know how it feels to play with that hand. And, you know, I'm sure it's not a hundred, hundred percent or whatever. So it, it was always going to be kind of a little bit of a, you know, curve there, but that's why he came in now. You know, the, the idea is when he's, he'll be as ready as he can be for that opening round in the playoffs, which is, is going to be interesting when we get the standings watch here. Uh, but the next game, the Lakers finished that six game road trip, incredible road trip out East five and one. Only lost the Pacer game. So, I mean, you they, you got to give them at least an A on that one. It's like, okay, you just missed one game. That's it. Other than that, it would have been a clean sweep on the road this late in the season. That's that, that's impressive. So, they did their job. Still struggling to get out of that nine seed because everyone's also winning around them. So, there hasn't been much ground that's been gained, but the wins have been looking good. And they've been impressive. Came back home. Lakers, Clippers. Uh, I was in attendance for this one. Lakers won 116-97. I was nervous about this game time. And the main reason I was nervous was – it's the first game back from a long road trip. That's always a struggle. Players and coaches always talk about how hard it is to come back after a long road trip. So I was worried about that. It was the matinee game. It was early 1230, really weird time on Saturday because the Kings played. So they got priority, as you've mentioned before. So they had to play early. So you're, you're coming home, long trip, early game. The Cavs, I don't believe in them, but they're a generally good team, right? They're not the Wizards. They're not the Nets. This is a team that's a playoff team, and we'll see what happens. But better than some of the talent they faced already. So are they going to take care of business? And I was a little nervous just because of all of those reasons, but they did. They dominated 116-97. You got a phenomenal D-low game. Six threes. He was everywhere. 28 points. You know, he was brilliant. LeBron kind of paced himself. He picked his spots. But 24 points, you know, he kind of gave you a classic LeBron game. AD, 13 rebounds, 22 points. Again, another double-double. And Torian Prince, this was a Torian Prince game. He's gotten a lot of slack from uh, Lakers Nation. He's gotten a lot of slack for his minutes, you know, and, and Ham for vi vi vouching for this guy so much. But my goodness, he was incredible here. 18 points, 7 for 9 from the field, a 4 for 5 from 3. It's funny because I won't say who I was sitting next to. I was sitting next to one of the reporters, you know, because obviously I sit with the reporters there uh, covering the game. And early on, he's like, oh, I'm glad he's hitting his threes. He's like, but I hope he stops like doing the dribble drive penetration stuff because that's not his game. And the person said it. And like the next possession, Torian gets the ball at the wing, pump fakes, dribble, dribble, spin, bucket. And then he's like, well, I guess I was wrong. <laughs> this is just his night because he, he just did what I told him I wanted him to stop doing. And he he hit it. And it was like, OK, that, that that's the kind of day. Uh, Prince is having apparently he can hear us or something because <laughs> he was on fire, but he was incredible. So again, I think people underestimate how hard it is to be a role player in the NBA. You're judged on like three to four shots on if you were good that day. Like it's pretty wild and they have to execute. He got more shots this time. He got nine, seven for nine, but it's a tough job just getting in there for a couple minutes and having to still be considered good. Uh, those are kind of my overall takeaways though. Lakers got the win. They needed it. Uh, they've improved themselves uh, in position. Finally in eight, at least for a moment, they're back, back to nine, but we'll get into those, uh, Positioning talks uh, later. 
Donnie, what were your thoughts? Uh, Lakers, Cavs, one, did you watch it? And if you did, what were your biggest takeaways? Couldn't watch this one because I was coaching uh, kids on the weekend. But just looking at some things on the box score, holding the Cavaliers to 43 points. Outside of Darius Garland, Karis Levert, and George Niang, everybody else didn't shoot that great. Jared Allen shot pretty well, but held Donovan Mitchell to 10 points on four for 13 shooting. So Reeves, the Lakers, good defense Reeves had on on, on uh, Donovan. Not the whole time, but he, he had some really good uh, performances there for sure. He's improving as a defender, no doubt. He's been uh, awesome defensively at the point of attack for like the last two months, it feels like, ever since that game against the Thunder where he was guarding SGA so well. And the Lakers are going to need it in the playoffs because that's something they've kind of lacked all season. And when you have that, plus the offense that's been electric so far, you mentioned LeBron's 24 points, but also 12 assists. Shot really well from the field in this game. Not as much from three, but 56%. And AD just seems like he's getting a double-double every single game. And yeah. we're going to probably talk about it towards the end that he's almost, what was he, top five in a season, double-double-wise in Laker history now. And he's climbing up the ranks with some of the greats. Uh, don't think he's going to catch Kareem's record at the top, but he might pass 2,000 Shaq, I believe, which is insane. Yeah. Obviously, different game now. More possessions, more rebounds to get. But still, nonetheless, when you're in that conversation and in – the same breath mentioned with those guys, the Laker, great. It's definitely amazing. And it's a testament to how good of a season AD's having. And alongside that double-double, he had six blocks. And then, yeah, uh, D'Angelo Russell, she's been playing great basketball lately. So the Lakers in general, she's playing really good basketball lately, rolling. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. I want to I hold off uh, the odds and stuff when we get to the Western Conference standings. But, yeah, they, they, they're there. And I think – I think people, the great thing about this year is there is a proof of concept from last year. You saw this very personnel do what they're doing now. It's weird it's happening again. It's weird they didn't run it back and actually get a better regular season. There's a lot of reasons for that. They had injuries. They had uh, rotation issues. Some of that was on ham for sure. Some of that's just like, hey, Vanda was out for a long time. Rui missed a big portion of the season. I think we forget that as well. So there's been other things. While LeBron and AD have been healthy, again, one thing we've learned, throughout this March Madness month is while key star players can take you there, you need the supporting cast to fully realize everything. And there have been moments where the stars have been there, but that supporting cast, you know, reads with his struggles early. D'Lo got benched for a moment, right? They had their moments, but right now everything's clicking. And yeah, it's a combination of everything's clicking and the opponents have been worse, but even in the, the games they've had against good opponents, they're getting results like this, or they've played well. They haven't looked like, oh, that was all fraudulent. Look how they are against the good teams. Like, no, they were right there, even in their defeat. So it, it's the best moment they've had this year is happening now, and this is a perfect time that you need to be having those moments. All right. You know, they, Cats, uh, you good? I was going to say the Torian Prince going to the bench, I think has been a good move as well, not just because Rui Hachimura has done so well, but it reduces the amount of, Negative things Torian Prince does. And I think it's like, I don't think Torian Prince was as detrimental as a lot of Laker fans made him out to be. But the, I've always said that he's a bench player on a good team. And I think when now you're seeing it, he's been good. I think he's not been that bad. He's actually been one of the better three-point shooters on the roster this season. For all the, you know, flack that he gets, he actually has been one of the better. Am I wrong about that percentage-wise? And he top like five on the team? Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, he's been better. He's He's been good. And now he's kind of, I think now he's in the role he needs to be in. Exactly. Which is, you know. 15, 20 minutes, no more unless you're on a heater, right? And that's what we're seeing. And that's what happened on this one, right? 21 minutes. So he, even now, with, with him pretty much playing borderline perfect, he got 21 minutes. That was it. I think that's perfect. You have you keep him there. Uh, you, you mitigate some of those errors. Because, again, the, the longer you play, the more your flaws are exposed. So it, it's a two-edged sword. You also have less time to show what you're, you're do you can do well in that time. But I think here, this is the perfect balance. You're getting most of the good and less of the bad. So that's, that's optimal, right? So that's what you want from Prince. So I, I feel like now he's in the spot he needs to be in. And he, he was definitely one of the stars on this game. And, and one of the reasons the Lakers uh, won the first game back in crypto after, you know, that, that excursion East they had for six games. All right. The Cavs stayed in town. Clippers, Cavs. And they took it, Dime. The double L. was a little dicey, though. 128-118. So, so paint a word picture for me. What happened in this game? Let me just say that I was going to go to this game and then I was having some stomach issues and I did not make it to the freeway. So that was very unfortunate. <laughs> really unfortunate because of what a great game it was. But I did get to watch the women's final, which was electric. And I hope we'll touch on some stuff related to WNBA draft towards the end. Sure. But 
What a game this was, huh? Came out with little intensity defensively, mainly in the second quarter and the beginning of the third. Went down 26. Zubats was getting completely owned by Evan Mobley around the basket. And James Harden was actually the only one making shots outside of Paul George in the first quarter. But we were just turning the ball over way too much. And the Cavs were on a heater, 9 for 18 from 3 in the first half. Then, if it's Zubat starts to wake up, gets a little tip in, hits a mid-range is rare to beat the shot clock, starts playing some good defense. Then Russell Westbrook comes in, and he and Norman Powell lead, help lead a big run, a big run. And just you just see that difference defensively when you have Russell Westbrook as opposed to James Harden, who is just not playing good defense, which is not a shock to anyone over the last couple of months. Russell Westbrook, when he gets extended burn and gives you that effort defensively, you know how much of a disruptor he can be off the ball. And he had some decent defensive possessions on the ball. And Norman Powell, I mean, all these comebacks the Clippers make, Norman Powell is one of the catalysts for it. That's why I say he really should win sixth man of the year. I think he should absolutely be in that final running at the at the absolute worst. I mean, he's so consistent. I'd go as far as to say that he's the second most consistent player on this team outside of Kawhi Leonard. And by the way, Kawhi Leonard missed another game, which doesn't concern me still. I believe what I heard. And all of a sudden before the game, uh, Ty Lu said, it's not concerning at all. So that tells me that whoever the source was that told my friend was so far so good. But what a fourth quarter from Paul George. And I think something you're starting to see from the Clipper players, it, mainly 2-1-3, Kawhi and Paul George, and you saw this in the playoffs, when it comes to the big games, when it comes to the tough matchups, it's not just, just that they add their to their defensive intensity, they rebound more. They get into double-digit rebounds frequently. Paul George, 11 rebounds in this game, and the man had 20-plus points in the fourth quarter I'm going to look up exactly how many, but the dude was just hitting step back three after step back three, getting to the basket. He had 23 in the fourth, six for 10 shooting, and played the whole quarter. Alongside Russell Westbrook and Amir Coffey, who also played the whole quarter. And the Cavs just kind of came back to earth uh, in terms of shooting the ball, but they also didn't have Donovan Mitchell. So no Kawhi, no Donovan Mitchell. James Harden didn't even come back in the game, Edwin. It was the first time since the trade that we closed with Russ and not Harden. Now people wow. were saying... But before the game, Harden was questionable with a sore foot. Here's what I think about that. Whose feet aren't sore at this point? Like, he 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 had a – his injury wasn't even a foot injury. He had a shoulder injury. I mean, I think to me it was – they were contemplating load managing him because he's played more games than, like, anyone on our team, I think, outside of, like, Norm. But he played actually decently, but his defense was garbage. I love that we made the run without him. Hopefully it allows us to not be so married to him in the – playoffs at times when he's not playing well because Russ when he gets extended burn can do some great things it wasn't like Russ was perfect but he was good sure and then Paul George that game winner was insane I mean by the way huge Terrence Mann game even though he's not been playing good defense for a couple of months the very average at best defense but offensively been much better in the count in the new year Paul George's game winner oh my god his second game winner of the season third clutch shot big shot at the season to kind of seal the win because that shot over Jonathan Isaac about a yeah. week in our last episode that we talked about was big time, but God, he is playing great basketball to end the season, Edwin. 39 points, and you know Paul George, when he's playing at his best, there's really no defense for the guy. And here's my favorite stat. Season high free throw attempts for him, 16 for 16 from the line. Yeah. Free that, throw, that, he's, that's averaging, incredible. he's averaging a career high from the, from the free throw line and from the field, and people are saying, he's oh, he shouldn't have even been an all-star. Dude, Paul George. Set the sacrifice of shooting one less shot a game because of Harden. He's playing some really good basketball going into the playoffs, Edwin. Yeah, I've always been a fan of, of Paul George. He's an incredible player. He's been an incredible player for a long time. I think people remember the lows, and they take that as, like, the sum of it. Like, oh, you know, uh, the, the bad playoff performance here and there, you know, not getting it done here. They, they remember the things he didn't do versus the things he did do, and the things he has done are incredible, Right. And when he's on a heater like that, it, like you said, there, there really isn't any defense. That's what made them so frightening as a pairing. You know, thinking of Kawhi and PG's like, oh, if they're both going, like, you're just going to be in hell. That's what's going to happen, right? And uh, like you said, there was no Kawhi here. And, and you know, that, that hasn't resulted in a championship, but it has resulted in the most successful Clippers era ever. So that says something, right? And and they still have, they have a chance here. We'll talk about it later. Four or five seed, 
in my opinion, when you're top four, you got a shot. That's what you got. That doesn't mean you're going to win it, but you got a shot. They're going to have a shot. They're going to have something to say. Someone's going to have to beat them. And it's, and someone, maybe if it's not the Nuggets, it'll be someone inexperienced beating a team like that. You know, it, it's going to be interesting. So, especially with them playing this well, uh, PG, the game winner, I, I really enjoyed it. I loved on Twitter kind of just seeing different people. Some people were up top showing the angle, and some people were like, you know, borderline courtside showing it. So, it was really cool seeing the the stadium go nuts. And, and I can't translate PG, it to English yet. I don't know what that was. And then PG get, getting animated. <laughs> I don't know what my computer thought was going on there. but And then PG getting animated. Uh, that, that was always fun. It's always fun to see the players just as engaged, you know, in the moments. And, and you know, we've talked about vocal leaders and who's the leader and stuff like that with all teams and the Clippers as well. But what I do like about the squad is they have a lot of guys who really care and they show it, right? right? Uh, Kawhi doesn't show it as much, but, you know, because that's how he is. But PG does. You know, Ross obviously does, you know, even Tyloo gets animated when he's out there, you know, uh, talking with refs or whatever. So, you know, you want to see them carry. You want to see that they're just as involved as everyone else is. And they definitely showed it and PG showed it in this moment. And it, it was good to see. And it, it was a good win for sure. All right. 26 points. Final one we're going to talk about here, Lakers, uh, T-Wolves. This game just happened. This one we're going to keep really short because honestly, there isn't much to learn. Why? LeBron missed the game due to flu-like symptoms, which I think are actually legit. I don't think he's load managing because if he was load managing, he would have just said it was because of his leg, which has been an issue all, all season. So I'm guessing he just kind of like uh, like dying. He must have had something wrong where he just couldn't <laughs> couldn't couldn't make it out there, uh, which is a bummer. And obviously that put a damper on things. But I still thought the Lakers could win. That went out the window once AD again gets clocked in the eye and has to get treatment and, and misses the rest of the game. Another frustrating thing. I really hope we'll see what happens with AD. Uh, they're both listed as questionable. So I think they're both going to play uh, tomorrow, which we'll get into those games. But the Lakers-Warriors game, obviously it's the biggest game of the season. There's no debate about it at this point. It, there might be some other big ones coming up. But right now, that's going to be the biggest game. I think they'll both play. I just hope we got to see it. You, AD, I know you don't want to do it. Put on the cream goggles. Like, let's go. Like, this is the second eye injury because someone hit you in the eye. Just put the goggles on, man, because we, we can't afford to be missing you. And that's really what happened here. They lost 127-117. The minute uh, AD was off the floor, it went from, like, a, a slight Lakers advantage to, like, a blowout defeat. And they, they fought back hard. They got some really good uh, minutes from Jackson Hayes. Is probably the only important thing because he was he scored 19 points. He was 8 for 9. He, he, was, he played control. He was offensively explosive. He gave you good effort defensively. He was killing them on the pick and roll with, with uh, Russell. Tilo's been good on the pick and roll with everyone, but this was another one. And I hope that this, the only takeaway I really have for the actual games, I hope this kind of reminds him, hey, Hayes can be really good. Maybe in some of those matchups, if we get them against the Timberwolves, against the Nuggets, like a little bit of Hayes and AD. Let's try it for, for four minutes. Let's see if we can kind of, you know, if we can find something there. I think there's something there going size for size. That might be the way if you get to this version of Hayes. You might be able to pull an upset or get some positive minutes uh, against teams that are really good. So that's the only takeaway because at the end of the day, this late in the season, if there's a game where LeBron and AD don't play, they're going to lose. If that happens in the playoffs, they're done. So so what is there to really to learn? You experiment a little bit with those non-LeBron uh, minutes, at least in the beginning. And then once LeBron and AD are out, to me, it just becomes like, good job, good effort. I appreciate it. They got within five in the third quarter. But, I mean, they didn't have LeBron and AD. And, and you know, the Timberwolves had, you know, Rudy and they had, you know, uh, Edwards playing. So they just couldn't beat a team like that with those two key players out. Yeah. When AD went out of the game, it was just like open season at the rim for. Uh, you muted it. Then. I'm not muted. Something with you. Anyway. Oh, wait. Um, no, never mind. That was on me. That was on me. <laughs> uh, You're not muted. You're good. Yeah, I know. Uh, Anthony Davis, when he came out of the game, it was just open season at the rim for the Wolves. They're getting in the paint left and right, and a lot of times Jackson Hayes would go up for the block, and then nobody would be there to protect the rim for Rudy's offensive rebound. And I thought also, you know, the margin for error is really small when you don't have LeBron and Anthony Davis, as you said. And Austin Reeves just didn't have a very good shooting game in this one, four for 14, two for eight from three. And D'Lo was a, had a really bad shooting game too, five for 19. So again, D'Lo and Reeves have been so good lately. They're bound to have a bad game here and there. And when the defense yeah. is zeroing in on them so much, they're getting the primary defenders, they're, uh, they might struggle. And the Minnesota Timberwolves are the number flirting with the one seed for a reason. But, yeah, it's just a tough one to lose at this point. 
The one positive I'll say for the Lakers is Rui Hachimura continues to just shoot so well. 30 points. I felt like every shot he took was going in. 11 for 17, 4 for 5 from 3. Jackson Hayes is playing his best ball of the season as well. And the Wolves just shot lights out too. I mean, 51% from the field and 38 and a half from three. So, and they're not a great offensive team. So, Nas yeah, Reed no. is going off. Nas Reed. Yeah, Nas Reed. He just loves playing the Lakers. He did it last time too. Like, if he played the Lakers, he'd be a max player. Like I'm saying right now. <laughs> it, it, it's it's kind of scary how, how good he is uh, against the Lakers. But, you know, it was one of those, hey, Again, they gave a good effort. They fought. They didn't quit. Of course, you know, they're professionals. They they, they did a, a the best job they could, and, and they fought valiantly. But at the end of the day, it, it was pretty much over once once it was ruled that, you know, AD was out for the rest of the game. So we'll, we'll see. So far, like I said, questionable uh, for the next game. I think they he will he, they both will play, but it's going to depend on, you know, what happens, uh, you know, from here to, to game time uh, tomorrow. So before we get into standings, watch, and before we do – the upcoming games, which will be the rest of it. I want to um, real quickly touch up on uh, the uh, WNBA draft because it's coming up. Uh, as, as I mentioned, every time we start this pod, I say Clippers, Lakers, and Sparks. And the Sparks stuff has been sparse because it's been, you know, obviously we're in the heat of the NBA season and the WNBA season is long and it hasn't really been, you know, happening. But now we're starting to get the trinkets, right? We're, we're starting to get there. Now we have the uh, the official ending of the uh, NCAA tournament. Both the men's and women's. We're done with college basketball. It's over. Champions have been crowned. And now it's all about declaring and setting up for the draft for both men's and women's. But obviously now we're going to focus on women. So WNBA draft, April 15th. So it's next week. It's right around the corner here. Um, the Sparks have the two and the fourth pick in terms of lottery. Then they have another first round pick later. And then I think I believe a third. So, but we're going to kind of just touch base a little bit on the top of the draft, uh, dime, just, we, we were talking a little bit and chatting about it, uh, you know, uh, privately, but, but what are you, what are you thinking here about this draft with now that you've seen a little bit more of the, of the college, uh, players, obviously during the tournament and you know, they got the two, they got the four, uh, where do you want to go with, uh, uh, sparks draft talk here? Well, I think there's two different routes that we can go. One, we can try to get a guard. Everybody's saying, I mean, you know the you know the pass roster better than I do. So if we need a guard, does that mean we take Rakea Jackson at second? But every single mock draft has us taking Cam at second. And yeah. we have a chance to potentially go with the Twin Towers situation of Cam at two and then Cardoso at four. That would give us a front line with a 6'4 girl and a 6'7 girl. And one can stretch the floor. I mean, that's going to be intimidating. So that would be cool. I've never seen Rakita Jackson play. So I'm curious to hear what you have to say because you're more tapped in on the Sparks than I am. But I'm just so excited. I think it's going to be fun to have Cam or Camila Cardoso or especially with Camila's popularity going up so much, being the most outstanding player. It's going to be cool to see that if, if she comes to L.A. At this point, I'm starting to think there's no chance Angel Reese comes to the Sparks, huh? No, I, I doubt it. Um, based on where they're drafting her, I, I don't think they're going to draft her that high, and I think she'll be gone before then. So she's in that like, kind of tweener. I think she'll probably be back half of the lottery, but not the top four pick in the lottery. So unless they jump up to get her, and honestly, how physical the W is, I'm a little concerned with Reese. Obviously, I think she's a tremendous talent and all that. I don't think I'd draft her uh, at two and four. I would probably draft her at seven, six, maybe even five, I'll think about, it, depending on who's on my board and you know, what it looks like at that point. I think five's the earliest you see uh, Reese gone. I think she's probably more in that six to 10 uh, range. Uh, Jackson's interesting. I really like Jackson's game. I think she's an incredible scorer. I think that that would be a good move. But again, you got two and four. It's really tricky. You're trying to figure out, I think obviously, you know, and I'll, and I'll probably have some conversations with Sparks uh, and whatever media availability they have with management in the upcoming uh, week. But I'm curious to see what they say about how they feel the classic question, right? Do you go for need or do you go for best? And what their what their official statement on that's going to be. The good news is, which is also bad news, they kind of need everything. <laughs> they lost great players like Jordan Canada, NECA, Shanae. Um, they have a lot of spots. So really they need all needs. I think if I had to say what they need the most, they need bigs because at least with the guard position, they have Lexi Brown, who's incredible. So you can make an argument they don't need guard as much because they have someone who might be an all-star this year, depending on if she can have a breakout year and remain healthy. While in the big department, I don't think you can say they have anyone who really has that kind of ceiling. 
Uh, they, they just they, they lost two of their two of their main bigs, their best bigs, and that's missing. So they definitely have to go. You have to go big with one of those two, I think, in terms of that is your need. And if you do a mock draft and just kind of look at the talent, you probably have a big in the top five. You probably have a couple. So it makes sense to grab one. Now, like you said, the question is which one? And do you go for Rickia Jackson to kind of get a different option there? I like Rickia Jackson. I would like her. I really feel like she's probably the third best player in the draft, which is tricky because they pick second. So it's like, what do you do? I think maybe I, I like your idea of Brink and, and Cardoso or trying to get Jackson. But uh, right now the Sky have the third pick. Do they pick her up? Some mock drafts say they will. Some some say they won't. Um, obviously, we all know who number one is going to be Caitlin Clark. So it really becomes a matter of what happens after that. So the, the Sparks will have to – it'll be tricky. No matter what, they'll have to be gambling, right? Because they know, they know what's going to be available when they're there. They'll have the first pick of anyone who's not named Caitlin Clark. Cool. So who do you pick? And who do you want at four? And do you think they'll still be there or will the Sky 3 take them? That might decide, you know, what kind of pick you are. It would be great if they were back to back and you can just get the top two that you want, but you're running the risk of that number three goes away. So for me, I think right now, I think let's go with the two towers, like you said, uh, uh, Brink and, uh, and Camilla. I would go with that. Jackson does entice me, though, but I, would, I think I would run the risk and say, hey, if the Sky pick her up, great. And they don't pick her up. They they really zag and go with like um, Aaliyah Edwards or something. That would make it interesting. Obviously, I think the the Sparks will probably just go with finding out, figuring out their depth chart and then going from there. But I'm very curious as to what happens there. But uh, we'll know more about that in the um, well <laughs> next week when we actually have the draft, and then let's see what kind of conversations uh, they have there. So um, yeah, that that's going to be I believe on ESPN. Let me just double check just so people know. And we'll we'll likely do the pod before the next um, before the draft happens. Let me check on that. Uh, actually, no, we'll probably do the we might do it directly after. So that'd be cool. Reaction to the Sparks drafting. We should probably do a video and just title it around that. To be honest, although it is NBA playoffs, but eh, why not? We, we, yeah, why not? Let's do it. Yeah, why not? Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll schedule that out. Maybe we'll just do an instant reaction after. Uh, once the, the first round's done, or even just once the, the first couple, yeah, probably the first round, just in case there's some trades or something. Well, here's uh, the yeah. thing. If it's on Monday, it's the draft's on Monday, Yeah, that means that the NBA won't have any games that day because the season. No, they don't. They they have, the season ends on Sunday. There'll be no games Monday. Uh, the early, the play-in starts the 16th to the 19th. So there'll be some space there. So there you go. Okay, so yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll on know the, we'll, new, we'll know the Clippers playoff matchup. And yes. then we'll know the Lakers playing situation. So we can talk about that plus the Sparks. That'd be a great episode. That's a big episode for basketball and Figueroa. So you guys better tune in. And also, I think if Rakea Jackson's there at four, I think we take her. Yeah, agreed. If she's there at four, you take her. So it'll it'll be interesting. We'll see what happens. All right, cool. Now let's go ahead. We'll jump into back into standings watch. Really excited about this one because this is our final standings watch. This is it. The next one will just be a recap of seedings and play-in matchups. So we made it. Uh, I'm really proud of the work we did. Uh, shout out to Dime for for kind of saying, hey, let's jump on this early. I was probably going to wait like another month. And he's like, I do it now. And I was like, all right, let, let's do it now. So we do it. We started it earlier than kind of everyone. And now it's it's a talk of town. Everyone's looking up break tie situations. Who's playing who? What does my team need? How close are we? And I'm like, hey, the water's warm, man. We, we've been out here <laughs> doing this work for a minute. So we're going to do it one more time. Uh, now we officially only have 10, so I don't have to ask Dime about the Rockets anymore. RIP. So we got the 10 on both sides. We'll start in the East and talk about that and go to the West. So number 10 in the East, we have the Hawks. Nine Bulls, eight Heat, seven Sixers. And then officially in the playoffs, if it ended today, which it doesn't, we have one more week. We have number six Pacers, five Cavs, four Knicks, number three, the Magic. Then two of the Bucks and the one the Celtics. I'm seeing a lot of facial expressions from Dime there. Dime, of all these teams, where do you want to kind of put your focus on here? Oh man, I only had to choose one. You 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 could piggyback if you want. You you can go a little right. further. First thing, the Chicago Bulls are playing the Atlanta Hawks. These last couple of games, just a matter of who's hosting that game, and that's huge in a one game situation. That's something to watch. Even though it means nothing, because they're no matter what, they're probably not going to beat that eight or seven team. But we'll see. Trey Young in one game, you'll just never know. Yeah. Now, the fact that three through eight are all separated by three losses, that's pretty intriguing. A lot can change there. I think Miami ends up playing a playing game, 
But that being said, they're only one loss difference, one and a half games behind the Pacers, who are sixth. So we'll see. I think the, the Heat end up playing a playing game and get out of it. And it'd be, oh my God, how funny would it be if we had Boston, Miami in the first round? That would be crazy. I think Boston would mess them up this time, though, honestly. I I want I hope that if things stay the way they are, they're at eight. I hope they beat the, the Sixers, they get the seven, and we get Bucks Heat again. We need it. The streets need it. It's gotta happen oh. again. Oh, and yeah, I actually think that's a better idea because then you can get Glenn Rivers out of here. Here's another thing. This is my last takeaway. By the way, the Celtics, and you're gonna hate the set win 62 wins, only 60 win team in the league this season. That is absolutely huge. Credit to them. It's always tough to win 60 games in a season. So they've done the regular season goal. Now it's time for their playoff goal. Chris Depp's Porzingis was load managed all season, and they still won 60-plus games because of their depth and a little bit of a whack east. But the Milwaukee Bucks, they're three – I mean, listen to this. I saw some tweets about Laker fans tweeting about how sorry the Bucks are and how it's crazy because Lakers are playing some of their best basketball, and they've barely moved up to the standings. They've not even moved up. They were eight seed for a second. Now they're ninth seed again. Milwaukee is three and seven in their last 10 have lost four straight games and they're still in second place in the Eastern conference. <laughs> yeah. It, they had a, they had a, a, there was a big gap there and you know, the, the Celtics again, uh, you know, I, I can't even, I struggle with words, but yes, they've been incredible. This is. Yeah. They, they've, I mean, the proof is to put in, they got 62 wins. The closest team in the East has 47. That's an enormous gap, enormous gap. We will see what happens, but it's going to be tough to beat them in the East. Uh, only a few teams, I think, even have the personnel to maybe do it. And I would never pick, unfortunately, anyone else to beat them in a seven-game series uh, in the East. And yeah, how the Bucks end here is going to be very interesting. The world's looking at it. You know, I, I think the Bucks have a lot of critics and cynics. You know, people who who don't like Giannis, people who don't like the Dame thing. They're like, look, this pairing didn't work. I told you. You know, Dames just goes on the grind thing, but when it really comes down to it, yeah, you know, these narratives, right? And then with the whole, the coach gets fired, who's doing a good job, they didn't like them. You bring in Doc Raymond, what is it? And then, then it's not working. So it's already setting up. That's why I want, give me all the spice, give me heat bucks. Let's have Jimmy Butler just giving them buckets and we're, we're kind of repeating the same thing we've done a couple of times. I'd be very interested to see uh, how that would work. And we might get it. We'll have to wait and see how, um, how Miami does. And also, can can the Bucks actually catch on? Because, I mean, I, you know, I've been pro the Magic. I've been a big fan of the Magic all season. You know, a little time I, I started not believing, but they, they kept up there. I did not envision two seed. That would be wild. They were the two seed this year. Of course, they can drop as low as like, you know, six or seven. So anything can happen. It's so tight. But still, the fact that they're a week away and they're only a game back of the two seed is unbelievable. So shout out to them. I hope they stay top four, top five, just because it'd be good for them. But I mean, who it's good. those those um, the East might not be as good as I would like it to be, just as, as a conference. But the series are going to be entertaining. Like three six Magic Pacers. I think I picked the Pacers in that. If it started now, you know, so that's like an upset right there. Four yeah. five Knicks. You already know what I would think. Yeah, that's what they call the series of the basketball purists because they're going to put that on NBA TV. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's definitely I, be- I, I'm, I'm I would love that series, but. But here's the thing I'll say about that series. I don't know if I want that because as great of first round hoops as that is, one of those teams gets the second round. And I don't know if those teams are real second round teams this year. Neither is. Yeah, I think the if the Bucks survive, let's say they play the Heat, that'll be a rough one. If the Bucks survive, then they mean to make the they may, they'll make the Eastern Conference Finals. So I think the Bucks beat the Magic or the Pacers. So well. We haven't acknowledged that Joel Embiid is back, but is he gonna be able to look like Joel Embiid before the playoffs? I think that's it's a tough ask. That's why I've kind of avoided talking about it until I, I see more and, and have a feel. I might even have a feel. I might just take a guess. Oh man, right now, if it was Bucks Sixers now, I think I'm gonna go with Bucks because of that reason. I just think it's it's a lot to ask for Embiid to come back, be great. Oh, and be great like playoff level intensity because it is the playoffs. I think I have to pick. I'll be rooting for the Sixers, but I think I have to pick the Bucks just from hey, continuity. Yeah. Did you did you hear that he had 30 points on? in 23 minutes the other day <laughs> he did but it's just it's the playoff series i'm, I'm a little nervous, I'm a little nervous. it's also against the memphis grizzlies who are completely just uh tanking yeah. at this point 
So yeah, they have no NBA players on uh, uh, play. They have few NBA players playing right now, but you know, yeah, but it, he's been looking good. So I'm, I'm hoping he, of course I want him to be, to be great. Yeah. The league's better when he is, but it's just, it's a lot to ask. Same thing with the Lakers and, and Vando, if he comes back, but we'll get to that they, in a moment. They've won five straight games too. And I didn't realize that he had a 25 point game before that. So man, by the next time we talk, we'll know. I think. Yeah, but yeah, we'll have a better idea and then we'll we'll preview playoffs so we'll be able to, to have some more information on how that's going. All right, let's head west. Number 10, Warriors. Nine, your Lakers. Eight, Kings. And seven, Pelicans in there. Play in time, Pelicans. All right. Now, if it ended now, these are the top six. Number six, we have the Suns. Five, Mavericks. Four, Clippers. Three, Thunder. Two, Nuggets. One, Timberwolves. We have so much we could talk about here in the West. So I'm going to just kick it off, actually, to get my thoughts out. One is the Lakers have to win out. That's the goal. No matter what, they're going to make the, the postseason, right, the play-in, because the Rockets are eliminated. So they're, if they lose everything, they'll just be the 10 seed, right? So they got that, right? But obviously, the Lakers-Warriors game is huge. Win that game. You probably bury them. You own the tiebreaker with only two games to go. That's what you want. And then the last game of the season is against the Pelicans. Again, you win that one, you also own the tiebreaker. So these these may this very much will matter if you get those wins. So those are the ones. But really, you only got three games. The other games the Grizzlies. So you can win out here. If you win out, it really makes things interesting. It just means that if any of uh, the – let me pull up the information here on the teams that they need to go uh, two and two. Uh, Mike Trudell, uh, Lakers reporter, he's been doing it forever. Uh, he, he he was uh, nice enough to kind of lay it all out on Twitter and kind of show the different scenarios and what the Lakers need. So if they go 3-0, and they just need Sacramento, New Orleans, or the Pelicans to go 2-2, two and two, and the Lakers would advance past them. So I'm going to stick to that scenario because that's the one that you can control your three wins. You need them to go 500. That might seem far-fetched given that there's only one week left, but the Pelicans, one of those losses would be against the Lakers. So really, you just need the Pelicans to lose one of those other three games they have, and that would push you up at least into the 7-8 the spot. And I think that's really important because that means you just need to win one road game to advance and make the playoffs. And it means you have to lose two elimination games to be officially kicked out. Versus if you're 9-10, all you need is Curry to go off and your season's over. That's it. This gives you a little more wiggle room. You have to lose on the road, and then you got to lose at home. So I think with this team, the way they're playing, they will not lose two back-to-back elimination games. One... That makes me a little more nervous. So, and it also makes you the eight seed. You don't have a chance of moving up to seven. So, um, that's kind of the the main thing I want to talk about with the Lakers. There, win out your games, and you got to pull for a two and two result from uh, one of those teams, either the Kings, the Pelicans, the Suns. Who knows? Couple do. You can jump up even more. They still technically can get up to the six seed, but you need everything to break your way. I think that's pretty much out of it, and we'll see as the week progresses uh, how realistic that can be. Uh, Dying. A lot, a lot we can talk about. We could do a whole pod on, on just the Western Conference if we wanted to. Uh, what do you want to kind of focus on here? First, I just want to say the Houston Rockets put up a valiant effort all season long. What an improvement. Ime Yudoka did an Credit amazing job. Uh, the Warriors are going to be involved in a postseason game, and I think that's going to be fun because it's the Warriors and Steph and the drama this season with Draymond. I've been saying I want Lakers-Warriors. I want to see it. I know you don't, but I want to see it. It's going to be an amazing ending to the season. So if you win, you would win the season series 3-1 or would it be 2-2? With the Warriors? Yeah. With the Warriors, it would be 2-2, but the Lakers on the tiebreaker because they have the better uh, division record. So if the Warriors win, it's 3-1? Yeah, and they they have the tiebreaker. Yeah. And they would wow. be only a half game. They would be a half game out with, you know, the games that are left. Wow. So, okay. What a huge game that is. I can't wait to watch that one. The other thing I want to say. So, yeah, the Lakers are playing well. It's just how amazing the West is. Sacramento, without Malik Monk, I still believe that they're not going to win anything, and they probably should be the 9 or 10 spot. But we'll see. They're battling. And then the race for 5, 6, and 7 is very intriguing, but it looks like the Dallas Mavericks are pulling away, and we're going to get part three. Oh, boy. They might be the hottest team in the league right now, Edwin. Nine you said and you wanted one. them. When I asked you last week, I said Pelicans or Mavs. You're like, I'd rather play the Mavs. Well, then I guess two days after I changed, I did an episode about how I'd rather play the, the Pelicans. But you know what I realized, Edwin? Brandon Ingram's not back. They can't beat anybody without him in a playoff series. No way. Yeah. So I, I definitely don't want to play Dallas. I'm, I'm not trying to play Luka and Kyrie Irving the way they're playing. Um, and then the last thing is 
that race for the one seed is so interesting because here's the thing, Edwin. I know you guys don't want to see Denver first. No. No, and, and we don't because we're the four seed. Let's say we get out of a grueling series against Luka. It's going to take seven games to beat that guy. Then we are rewarded. Hey, here's Jokic. Ooh, that's never a good reward. <laughs> exactly. It's over. Oh, my goodness. I'm, I feel sick. This is, I love it, but I feel sick. Um, so, yeah, I think the Lakers' number one thing is get the highest seat you can. So if it's the Nuggets, and I, I've actually had friends, they go, they almost talk me into this. You know what? The Nuggets are good. They're the defending champs. They're probably going to win it all. Let's just let's eat the vegetables right away. Just give me the Nuggets. We're as healthy as we are, right? Because if, if we get them later, LeBron's going to be more beat up. It's going to be more beat up. You only the, at risk the chance of more injury. You know what? Let's just lose two in the first. Let, 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 let's get it out of the way. Let's let's, let's take on Goliath. And maybe we maybe with a healthier LeBron, AD, they haven't gone through you know a month of playoff basketball. Maybe they can just do something. So I'm almost at that mindset, but not quite there. I still would prefer not to, but I definitely wouldn't like lose a seven, eight game to try to, you know, not play them or something. You, you, you gotta, you know, you don't want to, that you're not good enough to do that. <laughs> you got to win what you can, but who I would want to play. Give me Minnesota. Give me Oklahoma. Really give me Minnesota. I liked what I saw even in that last game and the other games. I think the Lakers healthy, AD Lee LeBron. If Hayes was doing that to go bear, what's AD going to do? I think he's going to do a great job. So give me that series. The Thunder, I would want to play less, but I would I would rather play uh, Minnesota Thunder. And I, I, I personally still wouldn't rather play the Nuggets, but I get the idea of, you know what, let's just take on the big bad wolf. And despite the fact the Lakers have lost, like including the playoffs, like eight in a row to that team, every game's been close. So maybe you can finally start getting some of that going your way in a series. That would be an interesting one for sure. It would be very intense for a first round. Uh, I can't wait. This is the point of the season that, that we both love. It, it's getting to the most important moments. So this is it. So that was our last standings watch. We'll come up with a new name for uh, the playoffs because we'll have to do that. And then I'll talk to you privately about if you want to make predictions for all of it. If you want to do the brackets for me, I, I do fill out a, an NBA bracket, but I actually like doing the round by round because I'm like, it's more of an assessment of my actual knowledge because I can test everything, but we'll talk about that behind the scenes. Maybe we'll just do a bracket or maybe we'll just do every round predictions, but I'll definitely be doing predictions on it everything and then we'll be the the standings watch will become you know kind of playoff roundup as we kind of watch everything and see how it's going and we'll probably maybe keep keep it going until the nba finals at least as a smaller segment as both our teams get knocked out because eventually one of our teams is going to die first because that's how it works we're in the same conference so be interesting i'll ask you this time who has a longer season lakers or clippers (laughs) <laughs> doesn't that all depend on the seating it would okay you you, you want to hold you hold your answer right now what? you know what right, right now, now i'm gonna say us i'm gonna i'm gonna say us because it looks like we're gonna be guaranteed a series right now exactly i'll ask but you in, again in a week in a week yes on the pod i'm gonna ask you're gonna put i'm gonna put you on the line the play in and then that question so so right now we'll put an asterisk on it like it, you you think clippers and yeah we'll say since we don't know once we know the lakers playing position i'm gonna hold you to it I'm like, all right Answer the question. I'll answer it too, because that means I either believe they're going to beat those playing teams and then go further, or you know, whatever. We'll get into all that. All right, cool. So let's um move on to the final thing, which is just looking at the final week. Again, this is the last time. Well, actually, no, we'll be doing upcoming games later, but it'll just be the playoff uh schedule, basically. So the last week we actually have variety. After this, they'll be playing the same teams again and again, whoever's left. So all right, starting immediately on Tuesday, Lakers, Warriors. Here in LA, biggest game of the season until the next game because they're all going to be big. But Lakers, Warriors, oh man! I mean, they both play each other so well. They know each other so well. If I think the Lakers are who I think they are, they pull out this win and finally end it. Because so far, there's been, especially the the last few years, a debate on who's better. The Lakers have gotten the better of the Warriors in the play-in. The Lakers have are leading the season series here, or actually, they're not leading it, but it's two one. But they can they can. They can tie it and get the division here. I'm going to go Lakers time. What do you think? Lakers as well. I just think like the, I just like the matchup with the Warriors. Just too big, too much size. Agreed. Okay. Same day, Tuesday. Clippers at Suns. Ooh, this one's tough. I'm going I'm, I'm really conflicted. You know what? I need the Clippers to win, so I'm going to go Clippers. I'm going with the Clippers as well. 
Cool. No okay. Kawhi, though. The Suns might need this game more than us. They do need it. They're, they're fighting to stay up at six. They don't want to get into the plane. So so both teams are going to – so I think the Clippers are still going to give – I'm curious. I'll ask you that. Actually, we'll ask you this now since we're still going Clippers-Suns on Wednesday. They have a back-to-back. Weird. Back-to-back same teams. The first game is going to be at Phoenix. The second game is going to be here in L.A. Clippers will be hosting, obviously. So given what you already know, that it seems like the four is locked in. Mathematically, it's not true, but it, it might be soon. Do you think the Clippers give a full effort? in these back-to-back games time. Well, we're already not playing Kawhi in this one. I think Kawhi will play that second one. He'll come back and he'll play the last three games of the season to get right back into shape after a fairly long rest for what we've been waiting for. Yeah. Okay. So you you have um, – what do you have for the Wednesday game? Wait, uh, Clippers versus Suns here in L.A. Will the, will the Clippers win that one? You know what? I'm going to switch my answer. We're going to lose the first one. We're going to win the second one. Okay, I shouldn't do this, but I need the wins. So I'm going, you know, I bleed red and blue, baby. We're going to clip for a sweep. I need it. I'm just at this point, I'm just going to, I'm going to believe it because I, I need it. That happens. That really helps the Lakers. That would ensure that the Lakers could, will pass. If that happens, the Lakers will pass the Suns as long as they win out. That would be it. They, that was the two losses. That means it wouldn't matter if they win. The, the Suns could win the rest of the games they have left. All Lakers have to do is win out. So, man, that would be huge. But, uh, Beating any team back to back is hard. We've talked about that. It's usually a split. So a split's probably the, the smarter play. Even if you get them wrong, it'll probably go one one. Because it's hard to beat the same team twice, especially literally back to back and on the road traveling. It's gonna be tough to do. All right. Thursday we have no Lakers Clippers action, but we have Friday. Lakers at Grizzlies, five o'clock. I mean, the Lakers are gonna win this one. They need it so bad. So I feel like that's that's an easy one to answer. What do you think then? Same thing. Okay, cool. Easy enough. Then Clippers versus the Jazz, again, I think the Clippers will take care of business. Only thing that makes me nervous is if they're really done and th- there's nothing, the game literally is meaningless. But even so, the Jazz are trying to lose games. So I don't know if you're going to have two teams scoring 70 points or something, but I think the Jazz lose because they have no interest in in, in playing uh, winning basketball at this point. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to be there. We're going to kill them. Nice. And then... Sunday. So I love that the NBA does this. I, I don't know when they started to because it wasn't always like that, but I love that they do two start, start times in all the games in the East end at one time and then all the games at the West end at one time. I, I'm really happy about that. And they're doing it again this year. So we have um wait. I thought they hold on. I think my timing is off here. Well, no, I think is it I, is a thing. Yeah, the, all the clip all the West games are at 12 30 Pacific time. Got it. For some reason I wrote I wrote three for the Lakers Pelicans. Let me let me just double check why I did that. I think I just made a mistake. That's Clippers weird. are playing the Clippers are playing the Rockets, and I think we're gonna win. Fan Appreciation Day. We get the win. Cruise into the playoffs for the fifth. I think fifty-two wins would be my prediction. There are no fifty-three wins. Fifty-three and twenty-nine. Be a good record. Yeah, no, that's that's a great record. The game's at twelve thirty Pacific. I'm looking at it at the Pelicans, and I'm going with Pelicans winning. That's wild. You're going Pelicans? Why? Home crowd. Maybe the return of Brandon Ingram. You you you're overestimating the impact Rel has at these games, man. Rel? <laughs> yeah, Rel. Yeah. 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 Respectfully. Respectfully, Rel Rel can't do that. I'll, I'll clip this out for him. But, but I'm like, all right, all right, all right, cool. That that's your prediction. Uh, I'm gonna go with Lakers win. The Lakers need the game as well. And when the Lakers need to beat the Pelicans, you know what happens. They get mollywhopped, and that's what's going to happen. And they get stomped out at the Bayou. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, who knows? Maybe it'll be result. result. The result will already be secured by then. I doubt it. I think it'll come down to the final day. Uh, really excited for that. Yeah, for some reason, I wrote 1230 in our in our doc, but that was on me. ESPN got it right. So uh, no diss there. But I was confused. I'm like, I know it's all at the same time. Why do they have different time? So before we conclude here, I want to – Go back to Clippers Rockets there. I think Clippers take care of business as well. Um, but Dime, you you have a week left still. I'm already I'm already kind of in my feelings because I, I think you know I'm kind of an emotional person. <laughs> uh just in general. I wear my heart on my sleeve, I kind of talk that way, I share everything. And for me, Tuesday is the last official Lakers regular season game. And I'm already kind of bummed out about it, right? Like I love covering this sport and going and all that stuff. And even though they're 
probably will be some postseason action I'll go to, and that's going to go technically for regular season. That's it. That's for me tomorrow. So it's a lot earlier because the other games are road games coming up. So I won't be obviously there. <laughs> there'll be nothing going on at crypto Laker related, uh, you know, those days. So for me, that's Tuesday. For you, that's Sunday. And not only is it Sunday, it's the last ever regular season home game for the Clippers at crypto. Unless something weird happens and they have to use it for some kind of emergency or you know, something, something odd. But that's it. After that, it's over. It'll always be postseason, but regular season is, is regular season, postseason, postseason. How are you feeling now thinking about that when I say that? And what will that mean to you? Or will it mean more to you maybe in the postseason when you, you know it's the end? It'll definitely mean more in the postseason, but two more Clipper home regular season games at the Stable Center probably for the rest of my life. And it's crazy to think about, man. Really crazy to think about. So many memories. I'm just going to take it all in, mainly on Friday, because um, on the last one, I still don't know my seating arrangement. That's something we can talk about off camera. But sure. I will be fine on Friday, and I think I'm going to really take it all in on that one. Just wow. But it'll be cool to be there for that last event as well. It's a farewell to the Staples Center, and I fell in love with the game there. But I also am going to the, my first LA Kings game of the season on Thursday. Got a really good oh. deal. I'm sitting in Premier for like less than 70 bucks. That's awesome. Yeah, and I think that what's nice about moments like this, so many times in life, we don't know when the end of something will be, right? <laughs> Not to get dark, but you don't know when the last time you talk to, you know, a person who passes or the last time a friend, like, moves and you actually don't connect, right? Like, we that's how life works. We just don't know. This one, you know. You have the date. You know, for you, like you said, we'll, we'll talk off camera about that Sunday, but you at least know Friday, and you know that's the last of this kind of game, and then you'll have the context. So it's kind of cool because it's an ending you're aware it's like, no, this is a real ending. Like, that's why I made a point of going to uh, crypto when it was still called Staples. I was there in the last game. And I know some people not in LA are like, well, who cares the name? It's like, names matter. Words matter. Titles matter. Now, I do call it crypto because I want to get used to the official name. And, you know, as, as a job, I don't want to accidentally be calling it Staples and writing Staples and articles and stuff. So I have to kind of keep it there. I know it'll always be Staples to certain people. But I'm like, well, it might mean that to you, but that's not the name. <laughs> so the name changed. So I got to get used to the name. And those things matter, right? They had a, a great video and all that. So I hope it's it's an, uh, as much as I'm not, you know, the biggest Clipper fan. I hope it's a great moment for the fans. They've been sharing that building just like us for a damn amount of time. They have their memories. They have their journey, the highs, the lows, all the things that happened in there, friendships that are made, tears that were shed, anger. Like, it really becomes like when there's a community constantly being there, it's like a house. It has a personality. It has an aura. You, you know your favorite spot, the restroom you like to go to, the 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 place you like to get your beverages like you, you end up getting the little nuances i like to park here i like to walk here oh i go around so i want to see this you know we all have our habits and think how we operate in that space and it was yours just like it was ours and now you're saying goodbye to it to go to some place that hopefully is way better and you enjoy just as much and you know make new memories but it's the end it's like it's like leaving your parents home or an apartment you've had for like a couple of years it's like that's the end of an era so uh, i hope you enjoy it i hope uh, the clipper fans Embrace it, give it a warm, you know, goodbye. And obviously, I know they're looking forward to the Intuit Dome. Why wouldn't you state of the art, brand new, and it's all yours? You know, you don't have to, you don't have to hear anyone trolling you about it. You could just say, no, this is this is my thing in Inglewood, and um, I can't wait to check it out. Uh, I don't know when I'm gonna go. I'll figure that out once we have a schedule and and kind of know where things are happening. But I'm excited about that too. So even with the sadness of a goodbye, there's the the promise of a new hello. So that's gonna be interesting for the Clippers uh, as we go into the postseason, and as we go into next year. All right, so that's it. Sunday, everything ends, like Dime said, 12.30 for the West Coast games. The 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 uh, East Coast, I believe, is 9 o'clock, so it's a little earlier. Then there'll be like a 30-minute gap, and then kind of like football does, where there's like a little gap, and then the rest of the game. So we'll have all the East Coast stuff done, and then we're going to go West, and then that's it. That's the NBA season. So Monday, uh, Dime and I will record. We'll figure out that stuff for the draft and for – the playoff scenario we'll, we'll first focus on playing and then we'll do playoff stuff so i'm super excited uh dime again we'll probably talk off camera we probably need to do at least a small video as well for playoffs because that'll happen i think before let me let me see when the official data when the nba playoffs begin i'll just try to do it right now real quick um just so we know when that is because we might have to just at least do a video predicting um it's going to be on the, saturday the 20th yeah so i think and again, we'll talk later, so everyone doesn't hear how the 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 meat is made. But I think we can we can do the 
Monday pod, the Monday vids on the draft. And then maybe once, like literally that night or whatever, once we know what the playoff situation is, even just like a short uh, video or something or a shorter episode where we just stick to, hey, tell me first rounds east, first round west. Let's get our predictions out there. Let's share it. And then Monday we can start right in the heat of the moment. Like, okay, here. So maybe we could do, I guess they call it a bonus pod, right? We could do a short bonus pod where we're just focusing, all right, Here's what happened. Who knows? Maybe you're laughing at me and the Lakers imploded and they're not even in the thing and I'm out already and we, we could we could do that. <laughs> we'll see what happens, but we'll know what happens with the plan and we'll know what happens there. But uh, for now, we're going to focus on the last reg- week of regular season action and Monday at minimum. We'll know where the Lakers stand. We'll know where the Clippers stand at least. We won't know their opponent yet. Oh, we might know that actually their opponent because they'll be four or five, but uh, the Lakers situation will be fluctuating as they're likely to be in that plan. So all right, that's the end of episode 24 of Basketball on Figaro. I'm Edwin Garcia. That was Dar E.N. Viziri, and we out. <laughs>